to talk to you about the Better Path Coalition's Article 1, Section 27 campaign. Uh, we have some events planned for the end of the month in Harrisburg that we wanted to fill you in on and we get, wanted to give you a little bit of uh, a taste of what we're going to be talking about. And so our speakers this evening are Maya Van Rossum, uh, who's the Delaware Riverkeeper, and she is going to be talking about the Green Amendment and how court cases have breathed life into Article 1, Section 27. She is, of course, also the author of a book called The Green Amendment, so I shall be able to fill you in on that a little bit as well. And then I'm going to talk to you about one of the, uh, the kickoff events uh, that we're having in Harrisburg on 127, in honor of Article 1, Section 27, and that's a, a panel discussion that we're calling um, Opportunity and Obligation, Article 1, Section 27, PA's Green Amendment. And then I'm going to be turning it over to Tim Spies, also of the Better Path Coalition and Lancaster Against Pipelines, who is going to talk about our big event at the Rotunda uh, and in the Capitol building on the next day, on Monday the 28th, uh, when we're going to be there with So he'll fill you all in about what that means in a few minutes. But before we do that, I just want to let you know that if you have questions for us, uh, feel free to drop them into the chat box while we're speaking, um, and afterwards we'll be able to answer your questions in our Q&A section. And so with that, um, let me turn it over to Maya Van Rossum. Maya, take it away. Great. Thanks so much, Karen. Um, as Karen said, we are here tonight to talk a little bit about green amendments, but really to hopefully inspire you all to participate in our action on uh, January 27 and January 28, where you can learn more about the power and importance of green amendments here in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, but also um, work with, with us to deliver the message to our legislators that we expect them to honor our constitutional right um, as captured in Pennsylvania's Green Amendment to a healthy environment. We all know when you know, we look at the, the history of um, Pennsylvania and the United States of America that while we may have in place a whole host of environmental protection laws, that really our environment is continuing to suffer. We have um, tremendous amounts of pollution being spewed into the air and into the water and into the soils and our landscapes. And as a result, the people of Pennsylvania and people in communities across the nation are suffering. Their health is suffering. The quality of their lives is suffering. Our property values are suffering. We're missing out on incredible job opportunities that come with a healthy environment and pursuing um, healthy environmental protection strategies. Um, Sorry. And um, one of the things that can help turn this around when we're looking at Pennsylvania and we're looking um, at communities across the United States of America is the passage of green amendments. That's including in the Bill of Rights section of our state constitutions the recognition that we all have an inalienable right to a healthy environment and that our legislators and regulators should make environmental protection their highest priority in their day-to-day decision-making. Now, we are very fortunate that here in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, we actually had a legislator, uh, Franklin Curry, who um, in as early as 1971 recognized recognize that our system of environmental laws were failing us and that we did need to pursue a stronger path for environmental protection. And that stronger path best came in the form of the passage of a constitutional environmental rights amendment, a green amendment. And so he very early on, um, actually in 1971, sought to have an environmental rights amendment added to the Pennsylvania State Constitution. And thankfully, because of um, his incredible vision and the strategies that he and others pursued in 1971 here in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, we actually got a constitutional right to pure water, clean air, and a healthy environment. And this back in 1971, and actually to this day, makes Pennsylvania rather unique when it comes to environmental protection because we are actually only one of two states that have this kind of green amendment. 
this recognition of the inalienable right to a healthy environment that must be given the highest level of protection under the law. Now, many people ask me, well, gosh, 1971, 48 years ago, that was a long time ago, but why is it that we're only really hearing about um, Pennsylvania's Green Amendment and the importance of having Article 1, Section 27 in our Pennsylvania Constitution? Why are we only hearing about that in recent years? In fact, mainly in the last five years. And that's actually because it really has been only in the last five years that we've secured legal strength in this Environmental Rights Amendment. And um, sad to say, uh, we had to experience fracking in Pennsylvania communities in order to give back to the people of Pennsylvania, restore to the people of Pennsylvania their constitutional right to a healthy environment. What happened was, while well, in 1971, Article 1, Section 27 was added to Pennsylvania's Constitution, very quickly it was overlooked by the courts and legislators and regulators for a whole host of reasons that we're going to talk more about um, at our events on January 27 and January 28. But long story short, we had this great language on the books, but we didn't actually have a legal right to a healthy environment because of the way the courts were interpreting and applying Article 1, Section 27. <clears throat> when fracking came to Pennsylvania and Pennsylvania's communities and inflicted all of its devastation, it um, and became the subject of a piece of legislation that was a very pro-fracking piece of legislation that would have been devastating, even more devastating, for Pennsylvania communities. Um, we at the Delaware Riverkeeper Network, along with seven municipalities and a physician, Dr. Maharnish Khan, realized that we might be in a moment in time when we might actually be able to breathe legal life back into Pennsylvania's Environmental Rights Amendment. And so the Delaware Riverkeeper Network, actually through our attorney, Jordan Yeager, um, brought to the debate over the, this pro-fracking piece of legislation known as Act 13, brought to the debate, brought to the litigation the argument that Act 13 was such an incredible overreach, such an incredible gift to the fracking industry that it ended up violating the constitutional right to a healthy environment for the people of Pennsylvania. And we were successful in our arguments. And in December of 2013, the Pennsylvania Supreme Court declared that the um, Pennsylvania Environmental Rights Amendment, Article 1, Section 27, our Pennsylvania Green Amendment, had the same legal strength as every other provision found in the Bill of Rights section of the Pennsylvania Constitution. Things like the right to free speech, due process rights, um, the, the right to freedom of religion and private property rights. Uh, so it was a, a tremendous success. And again, that, only, that decision only came down in December of 2013. So it really is that it has only been the last five years that we have had a legally powerful Green Amendment here in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. And so that's why you've been hearing so much about it. And since we had our legal victory in December of 2013, the Delaware Riverkeeper Network and other organizations have gone on through um, more litigation. And organizations like the Better Path Coalition have been using Article 1, Section 27 in advocacy to really flesh out what it means to have a constitutional right to a healthy environment here in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. And at our event um, uh, in January, on January 27th, Sunday, January 27th in Harrisburg, you were going to hear from Franklin Curry about how he came to, you know, originally conceive of and propose Article 1, Section 27. But you're also going to hear from Jordan Yeager, that powerfully important attorney who argued the case in front of the Pennsylvania Supreme Court and is going to talk about the other legal victories that have helped to, cur um, have helped to continue to advance the strength and the power of Pennsylvania's Green Amendment for the people of Pennsylvania. But it's also important for us all to remember, right, that um, our Green Amendment 
really at this point isn't just about the people of Pennsylvania. As I said, Pennsylvania is only one of two states that have this kind of constitutional right to a healthy environment. And what that means is that very literally the entire nation is watching us here in Pennsylvania, watching what we are accomplishing with Pennsylvania's reinvigorated, legally reinvigorated Green Amendment, or watching what we are not able to accomplish with this Green Amendment, right? People want to know, does having a Green Amendment really matter? Will it really make a difference in terms of environmental protection? I can tell you, um, as the Delaware Riverkeeper, as one of the lead plaintiffs in that um, iconic case that breathed legal life into Pennsylvania's Green Amendment, as the author of the book and as somebody who's been involved in environmental advocacy for 25 years, including really pressing this Green Amendment concept here in, in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania and across the nation in the last five years, I can tell you that I think Green Amendments are incredibly powerful and incredibly important and really are, um, are going to be the future for environmental protection if we can get this Green Amendment movement that we are advocating for really moving. But it's all starting here in Pennsylvania. And if we are going to get the strength of a Green Amendment in Pennsylvania, if we are going to get the passage of Green Amendments in other states across the nation, we have to show everybody in the U.S. that having a Green Amendment matters. And it all starts with we the people holding our legislators accountable for their constitutional obligation to honor our rights under Article 1, Section 27 of the Pennsylvania Constitution to pure water, clean air, and a healthy environment. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to Karen Ferriden to talk about how you can participate in helping us make this happen. Thanks, Maya. So, as Maya said, um, we're having this event on January 27th that features Franklin Curry, Maya, and Jordan Yeager, and I'll tell you about that event and the other speakers in a minute. But I wanted to sort of back up for a second to explain what the Better Path Coalition is. Uh, we came into being last April when we had a kickoff event at the state capitol. Uh, we had a rally that we called um, We Choose a Better Path, Governor Wolf, because we also I uh, want to pressure him. We believe the buck stops with him with respect to a lot of the degradation that's going on in the state right now, thanks to fracking and other forms of fossil fuel extraction and other forms of environmental pollution. Um, we believe that he needs to be a climate leader. And so we're calling not just on the legislature, but on Governor Wolf as well throughout the work that we do as the Better Path Coalition to you know, take strong actions. And so um, we kicked off with that initial um, rally, and we have been doing actions ever since, and we did an unfractured screening across the state where we brought in Sandra Steingraber, who's very well known in the movement in New York uh, for having fought for the ban on fracking there, and the film that we showed chronicles her uh, sort of transition from being a, a quiet, shy scientist into being someone who was a movement leader. Uh, to, uh, you know, to serve as some inspiration for a state that has been really battered for many, many years. And so, uh, you know, this is the latest of our campaigns, Article 1, Section 27, calling on the state legislature and our governor to uh, to our uh, constitutional rights, that we have this thing on the books, and it's critical that the courts have breathed new life into it, thanks to lawsuits like the one I was just telling you about. But, you know, why don't we try preventing some of these problems in the first place by having the people who set the policies and pass the laws and make the regulations, uh, you know, pay attention to the fact that we have this protection and uphold that part of the Constitution. Just yesterday, Governor Wolf took his oath of office uh, on January 1st, all our legislators did, you know, when they swore an oath, they swore to uphold the Constitution, not just the parts that they like. And so we decided it was very important to have a campaign that brought this to light. A lot of people don't know we have this amendment. Uh, so to, you know, to really share this information with the public and to get people engaged and calling for them to uphold our constitutional rights. And so 
we started our campaign on election day when volunteers across the state took a petition that we're going to ask you to sign if you haven't already signed it um, to the polling locations and had people sign on their way out. Um, and so we have just now passed the 6,000 number. Uh, we have lots of petition signatures from across the state and some people outside of the state have been signing, but we're focusing obviously on the ones from Pennsylvania who are speaking to their own legislators and their own governor. Uh, we're going to be delivering that, and Tim will tell you about that. But we wanted to observe you know, the date 127 because it's you know, the same as Article 1, Section 27, the same numbers. We thought it would be a, a good date to bring out, you know, uh, get our campaign uh, going to the next level. And so we decided to do that with this panel discussion that I'm about to describe. And so, like I said at the outset, it's called Opportunity and Obligation, Article 1, Section 27, PA's Green Amendment. And we're having it at St. Stephen's Episcopal Church in Harrisburg, which is on 221 North Front Street, so we're in our Front Street by the river, um, from 2.30 till 4.30. Um, there's a, uh, an Eventbrite link we'll share with you a little bit later for you to sign up to attend, and uh, we're asking for everybody to RSVP. Um, but the doors open at 2.15, and there will be free parking available behind the church, so it shouldn't be a problem if you can attend. Um, and so what we wanted to do with that panel discussion was bring together people who are not just experts on um, the amendment and the law, but we wanted to bring some experts along from science and from health sciences as well to talk about the importance of having such an amendment why it's so important at this critical time, especially when we've been getting all the dire news that we've been getting in the past several months and seeing firsthand climate change playing out in real time. And so we have with us Franklin Curry, the former state representative and author of Article 1, Section 27, Maya Van Rossum, the Delaware Riverkeeper and author of the book, The Green Amendment, Jordan Yeager, partner at Curtin and Heather, whose legal arguments concerning Article 1, Section 27 resulted in the landmark Act 13 ruling that breathed life into the amendment. Then we have Anthony Ingrafia, the Dwight C. Baum Professor Emeritus at Cornell University, who will discuss shell gas development's role in climate change and environmental devastation in Pennsylvania, tying that in again to the importance of having this protection and why isn't it being used, why isn't it being upheld. Um, Punya Saberi, who is the president of the Board of Directors for uh, Physicians for Social Responsibility in Philadelphia. Uh, she'll be approaching it from the perspective of a health professional, but she also just got back from COP24, and so she's going to share some of her uh, insights into what happened um, at this most recent climate meeting. Uh, and then we have Ashton Clatterbuck, and I'm probably most excited about him because he's from the French Island. He's also been a very fierce fighter in Lancaster against pipelines for a long time now. And he's, what, 17 years old, I believe? And, you know, he's in high school. And so this is somebody who is inheriting the myth that we are leaving to the next generation. He's already taken a strong stand to fight for his community, to fight for the planet, to fight for our environment. And so he's going to be representing the voice of the future at our panel discussion. And then I'll be there as well to MC and to talk about what we're going to be doing the next day. And so I'm going to let Tim give you a little sneak preview about that portion of it right now. Tim? Okay, thanks, Karen. Um, yeah, so uh, it's a great lineup for Sunday, but let's face it, folks, that's not fun for the kids. It'll be very informative, but that's no fun for the kids. This is going to be fun for the kids on, uh, on the 28th, on Monday. Uh, we're going to be back at the Capitol. This time we're going to be in the rotunda, and this is for our delivery of the petitions and the, uh, the copies of the Lorax. Um, so this is our Team Lorax event on Monday. It starts at 1130 uh, in the rotunda, uh, in Capitol Rotunda. And uh, when we all line up there at the rotunda steps, kind of the podium, it's going to look just like this. It's exactly what it's going to look like. Um, we've got at least two dozen kids right now that are planning on being there and um, they're going to be delivering, uh, we're going to have some speakers and then after the speakers we're going to be delivering copies of the Lorax. Um, you can see here we've got uh, uh, 205 copies there. Uh, Karen's going to throw some more in that mix. Uh, but there's, there's the books that we got and, uh, and that's, we want to thank the Delaware Riverkeeper Network for helping us uh, with the financing for that. Um, and um, We've got um, costumes for the kids. There they are. Look at that. So there they are. The kids will be wearing those uh, uh, Lorax masks, 
and going through the Capitol, delivering a copy of the Lorax to each legislator, representative, and the governor, and a copy of the petition. Um, and uh, we're going to have, like I said, we're going to have speakers. We're going to be back here, uh, back here in the rotunda. We're going to have speakers. Uh, and it kind of came, I got to thinking about speakers, and I'm thinking this needs to be young people. So I'm trying to make this day about the kids. Maya mentioned the future. Karen just mentioned Ashton Clatterbuck. He was 16 when he got arrested at, the, uh, at, at a protest for the pipeline being put in down there at the, the Adorers property in Lancaster, Pennsylvania, where the pipeline wanted to go through the property owned by the nuns that we partnered with. 16 years old and was handcuffed and, uh, and was arrested. Um, so they're our future. They're who we need to be investing in. So we've got, um, we've got a nine and a 10 year old that are gonna be speaking. We've got uh, actually Maya's son, Wim is gonna be speaking. He's 12 years old. We've got um, two people, two representatives from the, the Sunrise Movement, Ashton and uh, Serena. Um, and then we've got, I think, two people, I believe, from Northampton uh, College that, um, that are going to be speaking, a, a student and a faculty member, I believe. Um, so we've got a lot of young people because in 10 or 20 years, these are the people who are going to be carrying on this fight. Uh, I won't be doing it anymore, I guarantee you that. Uh, but these are the people we need to invest in. So this is not just a cute um, publicity stunt, which it is. Um, this is dead serious because we got to get the message to the legislators and the people that are making these policy decisions that this is about the future of our children. Uh, and the future of our children is in their hands right now. That's got to be the message. Um, and also, we, need to, we really need to make a name for the Better Path Coalition. Uh, and that's why we're doing an event like this because you know the press is going to come out to take pictures of the kids wearing these Lorax costumes. Um, and the Better Path Coalition needs to build its reputation, needs to increase its membership, get attention, and start doing the serious work um, of camping out on the governor's doorstep and forcing the change that they're not willing to, uh, to bring about um, through having a good conscience. So we're going to do that for them. So anyway, that's what's going on there. And uh, we're hoping you can uh, come out for one or both of the events, uh, help spread the word. And I'm going to turn it back to Karen now, uh, and she's going to talk about some of these links and some of the ways that you can help uh, help us make this uh, event uh, a real success. Okay, thanks. Thanks, Tim. Um, I just wanted to clarify the students from Northampton Community College are both students, and that's the first college to go 100% renewable in the, in the country, actually. So it's a very exciting thing that's happening at this very small community college in Bethlehem, and that's why we were especially interested in amplifying what they're doing there. But I just wanted to make that clarification. Um, but um, here's a page of all the various ways that you can get involved. So I mentioned earlier on the petition, Tim just mentioned it too, we're going to be delivering this petition that is now more than 6,000 signatures strong um, to every office, you know, to every legislator, to the governor. And so we're going to be um, asking people in this next you know, few days before we go to Harrisburg to keep signing and keep sharing that petition. And so if you look on the, the first link, it's bit.ly links are shortened links so you don't have to try to remember the long URLs. And so if you click on that link, bit.ly at uh, slash 127 petition, you'll be able to uh, find a moveon.org petition that we have out there. Um, then there's a paper version of it. We've had a lot of people since that first uh, kickoff of our campaign where people were polling, going to the polling locations with paper petitions. Uh, since then, we've had many, many people interested in doing the same thing in their communities, at local meetings. And so we still have the downloadable paper petition. You can download it around to your friends and simply take a photo of it or scan it and just mail it to the Better Pass Coalition, and we'll include them in the stack of petitions that we deliver that day. Um, all of this is on our website, so you don't have to remember these Bitly links, but if you're jotting them down, this is how you'll be able to reach these various uh, resources I'm telling you about. Um, and so the other thing that we're doing is creating a banner to take with us that day. And what we've been doing for some time now is collecting people holding signs that are different uh, bits of language from Article 1, Section 27 that's spread across three pages, and then we have one that says Governor Wolf, and one that says PA legislators, and then it says uphold uh, Article 1, Section 27, and then the last one says PA's Green Amendment. And so seven signs all together, download the PowerPoint, makes it all, it makes up all the 
um, and select whichever ones you want to take a picture of. If you take a selfie with those signs, you can send that to us, and we'll include that one on the banner as well. Um, you can sign up your little one still to participate in Team Laura. Uh, I think Kim is uh, the deadline of the 20th. Is that right, Tim? Sure. <laughs> I'll make another trip out to the out to AC AC Moore, and, and we'll we'll make more costumes. Yeah, this time, this time. <laughs> well, yeah, the sooner the better. Because Tim is working really hard putting together those Laura chats, and we're also providing T-shirts, so we need to order those, and so we'll need to get sizes and things. So if you go to bit.ly slash Team Laura, it's a very very short form. You can fill out that just provides us with your contact information, so that you don't have to share your child's sizes anywhere like Google Docs, you know. So then we'll contact you to get that more personal information about what we need to purchase. Um, and please sign up as soon as possible for that. And um, of course, all this costs money, and so we have been raising funds. And so if you're interested in donating to help us purchase the books and the T-shirts and all the you know materials that we need, we're also having a booth candlelight vigil, vigil after the panel discussion. Anybody who's interested can walk up to the Capitol. So we're purchasing the candles for that. We're purchasing snacks for the kids to have after the Team Lorax deliveries and so forth. So there's you know a bunch of different things that we're incorporating into the campaign. If you're willing to help out with that financially, we'd love your help. <laughs> um, we also have um, organizations who are sponsoring our events. Uh, we have March on Harrisburg and Put People First Day as our sponsors. Um, if anybody from an organization is interested in having their organization sponsor, if you're authorized to just sign up as a sponsor, please do. If you want to go to your leadership and say, are you sponsoring this? Why don't you? Um, you know, and send them a link, ask them to sponsor. We welcome every organization that would do that. Um, but we also, you know, are saying, you know, if you're interested in getting involved, why not just become a member of the Better Path Coalition? And so you can, as individuals or organizations, at link bit.ly slash join BPC to actually become a member of our organization. You'll get on our list and you'll get all the updates about actions that we're planning and things that we're asking you to do, uh, call in some days to sign things, you know, letters and petitions. So if you want to get involved at that level, please join the coalition. Um, and then, of course, there are the links for the panel discussion and for the petition delivery. So if you want to attend the panel discussion and use that RSVP link, It'll take you to an Eventbrite page. There's no cost for the ticket. It's just that we're asking you to reserve seats so we know who's coming. And um, we're also asking adults who want to participate in the rally and the petition delivery who will accompany the various LARAX teams to sign up using the same form that the kids are using to sign up. Uh, we just, again, want to know because we're going to be assigning everybody to teams. It's a big capital building, lots of offices, so we need to know you know, which people are going to which offices and have all that organized for you so it's not chaos on the 28th. Um, so please sign up if you're able to participate in that event. Um, we're going to take your questions now. I don't see any listed just yet, but if you do have any questions for us, if you want to jot them into the chat box, we can wait another minute while you do that. Um, otherwise, please jot down the links before we sign off. And if you don't have a pen handy or you don't want to jot all this down, please just visit betterpathcoalition.org, and that will take you automatically. We have it set up. That there's a little page that pops up and will take you automatically if you click on Learn More to our page that's all about this campaign, and all of these links are there. And so if you're interested in um, not having a jot it all down but just seeing our entire campaign page, betterpathcoalition.org, or visit us on Facebook or Twitter. We're everywhere. We're on Instagram. So check out Better Path Coalition, and you'll find links to get to whatever link you're looking to learn more about or to use as, as a sign-up. And so you can see it there in the chat box, betterpathcoalition.org. So with that, I want to thank Maya and Tim, and I want to thank Bridget and Tim at um, Delaware Riverkeeper Network and the whole organization for providing us with their webinar tool. I want to thank you for joining the call tonight, and I um, look to see you on the 27th in Harrisburg. Thank you. Good night.